I had another fall recently, got this nasty bruise on my arm. It's not the first time, and I'm really worried. These blood thinners, they feel like more of a foe than a friend sometimes. I'm scared of falling again, and it's not just the bruises, it's my independence, you know? I don't want to lose that. Mr. Cavanagh, a sprightly 85-year-old despite some health challenges, sat across from me, his brow furrowed with worry. He had taken a tumble recently, resulting in a nasty bruise that still marred his arm. This wasn't his first fall, and his concern was palpable. He was on blood thinners, a necessary measure to manage his heart condition. However, he confessed to feeling like they were more foe than friend, making him susceptible to these alarming spills. Mr. Cavanagh's voice wavered slightly as he expressed his fear of falling again, the fear of further injury magnified by the blood thinners. He was a proud man, fiercely independent, and the thought of these falls chipping away at his autonomy was clearly distressing. I listened intently, understanding that his concerns extended beyond the physical. This wasn't just about bruises and broken bones, it was about preserving his dignity and his way of life. Mr. Cavanagh, I began, my voice gentle but firm. I understand your concerns about the blood thinners. They're essential for your heart health, but I want to assure you that your safety is my priority too. I explained that his blood thinners, while crucial for preventing dangerous blood clots, did come with a slightly increased risk of bleeding. This meant that falls could lead to more significant bruising or bleeding complications. However, abruptly stopping the medication without careful consideration and medical guidance was absolutely not an option. Stopping the medication without a plan could have serious consequences for your heart, I cautioned. It's important that we work together to find a solution that addresses both your heart health and your risk of falls. I could see the worry etched on Mr. Cavanagh's face. He was clearly caught between a rock and a hard place, understanding the necessity of the medication but dreading its potential consequences. I wanted to ensure he was fully informed in making a decision. Let's talk about the risks of stopping the blood thinners, I suggested, grabbing a piece of paper to jot down some key points. Without them, you're at a significantly higher risk of stroke or heart attack. These are serious conditions that could severely impact your health and independence. I explained that while the blood thinners increased his bleeding risk, the potential consequences of stopping them were far more severe. It was a delicate balance and we needed to find a way to manage both aspects effectively. Mr. Cavanagh, I want to reassure you that we can find a solution that works for you, I said, offering a reassuring smile. There are several things we can consider to minimize your risk of falls without compromising your heart health. I suggested a multi-pronged approach. First, we would assess his home environment for potential hazards, removing tripping hazards and installing grab bars in the bathroom. Second, we would explore physical therapy to improve his balance and strength, reducing his risk of falls. Finally, I suggested a medication review to ensure none of his other medications could be contributing to dizziness or unsteadiness. By taking these steps, we can significantly reduce your risk of falls while ensuring your heart remains protected, I concluded. Section 5. The Importance of Independence I could sense Mr. Cavanagh's hesitation when I mentioned the possibility of in-home assistance. His pride and independence were clearly important to him. I understand that you're a very independent man, Mr. Cavanagh, I acknowledged, and I want to respect that. I explained that in-home help wasn't about taking away his independence, but rather about providing an extra layer of support to keep him safe. It could be as simple as someone helping with groceries or housework, freeing you up to focus on your health and well-being, I suggested. I emphasized that the decision was ultimately his. We would explore all options and find a solution that respected his wishes while ensuring his safety and well-being. Section 6. Navigating Parkinson's Challenges Mr. Cavanagh's health concerns extended beyond his heart and his recent falls. He was also living with Parkinson's disease, a progressive neurological disorder that affected his movement and balance. This, I knew, could further contribute to his risk of falls. We discussed his Parkinson's symptoms, 
which included tremors and stiffness. I explained that while there was no cure for Parkinson's, there were medications and therapies that could effectively manage the symptoms and improve his quality of life. I stressed the importance of adhering to his prescribed medication regimen and engaging in regular exercise tailored for Parkinson's patients. These measures, I explained, could help improve his mobility, balance and overall well-being. Section 7. Addressing Hallucinations In addition to his physical challenges, Mr. Cavanan confided in me about experiencing occasional hallucinations, a side effect of his Parkinson's medication. He was understandably concerned by these episodes, which could be unsettling and disorienting. I reassured him that hallucinations, while disconcerting, were not uncommon with Parkinson's medications. There are ways to manage these episodes, I assured him, and I want to work with you to find the best approach. We discussed the possibility of adjusting his medication dosage or exploring alternative medications with fewer side effects. We also talked about non-pharmacological strategies such as ensuring adequate lighting in his home and engaging in activities that kept him mentally stimulated. Section 8. Building Trust and Finding Solutions Throughout our consultation, I made a conscious effort to build rapport with Mr. Cavanagh. I understood that trust was paramount, especially given his initial reluctance towards in-home assistance and his concerns about his medications. I listened patiently to his concerns, validating his feelings and addressing his questions with empathy and clarity. I wanted him to feel heard and understood, to feel confident that I had his best interests at heart. I emphasised that we were a team, working together to find the best possible solutions for his health and well-being. I wanted him to feel empowered, to be an active participant in his care plan. Section 9. A plan for moving forward. As our consultation drew to a close, I summarised the plan we had discussed. We would address his fall risk with a combination of home safety modifications, physical therapy and a medication review. We would explore options for in-home assistance, respecting his desire for independence while ensuring his safety. We would closely monitor his Parkinson's symptoms, adjusting his medication as needed and incorporating exercise and lifestyle modifications to manage his condition effectively. We would address his hallucinations, exploring medication adjustments and non-pharmacological strategies to minimise their impact on his life. Mr. Cavanagh, I said, offering a reassuring smile, I'm confident that by working together, we can address these challenges and help you maintain your independence and quality of life. He nodded, a glimmer of hope replacing the one in his eyes. We had a plan, a path forward, and I was determined to walk alongside him every step of the way.